hello guys welcome to the channel in this video we'll go over some basic tips for updating and reviewing system security plan ssp as always before we proceed please consider subscribing to help the channel grow if you haven't already also do smash the like button and the notification bell to get notified whenever i upload new videos all right let's get started all right what is system security plan System Security Plan is the document that describes and summarizes the security requirements of an information system and also describes the security control in place and or plan. SSP contains all information you need to know about the system, including point of contact and system stakeholders. So this means that when you get a job as an Information System Security Officer, ISO, one of the first things you should do is to request for hard copy SSP of your assigned system to familiarize yourself with the system and its point of contacts and the stakeholders. Some of the main or core component of an SSP. Number one, the system identification. It is very important that the SSP should identify or define or describe the system. What is the purpose of the system? Why was the system developed in the first place? System architecture diagram. The SSP should be able to identify all the various components of the system. What are the information flow? You know, how does the system interact with the other system within the boundary? What is the authorization boundary of the system? Everything should be identified within the SSP and captured in the system architecture diagram. The stakeholders and the point of contact. You know, the stakeholders, meaning Whoever has any stake in the system, you know, the system owner, the ESO, uh, the authorizing official, the system admins on the system, the engineers, uh, the technical lead, anybody that has any stake in the system should be identified in the SSP, the point of contact details, their addresses, their phone numbers, and how they get, uh, how to get in touch with them should anybody needs to get in touch with them to discuss anything related to the system. System hardware and software inventory. The SSP should be able to list or point to where the system hardware and the software inventory is located, right? You should be able to know what are the servers, what are the devices that are, uh, or what are the software that the system implement everything that you need to know about the hardware and software basically of the system should be captured within the SSP. The system operating environment is a system operational or is a system in the development phase. All of these things should be identified in the SSP. System interconnection and information sharing. Does the system have uh, any interconnection with other systems within the agency or outside the agency? You know, how does the information sharing occur? You know, everything should be captured in the SSP. General description of information and data. So you have to understand what is the information types that the system is processing. You know, that feed into what the categorization of the information system and everything should be documented in the SSP as well. The applicable laws and regulations, of course, FISMA is going to be one of them. OMB Circular 133 is going to be one of the applicable laws and, and any other laws that the system has to comply with. Everything has to be documented in the SSP. The security controls, this is going to be the majority of the bulk of the SSP because it has to because it contains all the implementation statement and how these controls are being implemented on the system. Everything will be captured in the SSP. So now let's look at the key areas to look at when updating an SSP. Whenever you have an assignment to update an SSP, the very first area to look at is the document records of change and the version history. For example, this is the template SSP that I have, right? So. You can see right off the back that this SSP was last updated in November 2020, right? So when you go down, you're going to see the records of change and version history. So in this records of change and version history, since I'm going to do, I'm assuming that I'm doing the, the yearly review of this SSP, the very first area that I have to update will be the records of change and version history. So for instance, if I am updating this uh, SSP, this is going to be 1.9. The version record is going to be 1.9. 
and uh, the date that I'm updating this document is going to be 13 2021 and what section of the SSP am I updating because this is the yearly review I'm going to read through the whole document and update the document and update every section of the document and anything that has changed within the SSP I'm going to update it so I'm going to specify all section I'm going to read all section and update it and what is the revision summary so I'm going to mention that I'm doing the yearly review and my name goes in here I'm the one reviewing this document right so that's the very first point of update for the SSP review and update all right so moving on number two stakeholders and point of contact details you have to make sure all the stakeholders identified on this system have the right and correct and accurate point of contact meaning their addresses their email addresses and the phone numbers within the ssp are accurate and are current and if anybody or if there's a movement or there's a change for instance if the system owner has been replaced or changed or the system owner has left the agency or has resigned or moved on to another uh another role you have to make sure those names are updated as you go so all the time you know ssp is more like a living document when there's a movement even before the year ends if the ssp needs an update for, uh, if a system owner change or ESO role change and we have a new ESO or what have you, these document or this document should be updated as you go. But if that does not happen within, you know, as we go, the yearly review should make sure that all the stakeholders and the point of contact details are correct and accurate. All right. So moving on with our sample SSP, we're going to go down and see where we have the stakeholder and the point of contact details. All right, so here we have table five, responsible organization for system development and lifecycle support lead. All right, so whoever is going to be the S uh, SDLC lead for this system, their name should be here. So this is, this is going to be their address, this is going to be their point of contact, their details, their phone numbers, and their email. So these are some of the information that you have to verify that they're still accurate and they're still ref they, they still reflect who the current SDLC lead is. If there's a change in the name or the department or the point of contact details, this needs to be updated. Very, very important. All right. So moving down, you also go to uh, the organization, uh, responsible organization for system maintenance. Whoever is going to be responsible for maintenance of this system is going to have its uh, point of contact details here, the address and the department, right? So let's say the department here will be IT as well. And then make, you have to make sure that the name and address are accurate, you know, and everything is right within the system. All right, moving down, we have a patch management lead. Whoever is going to be the patch management lead, you have to make sure they are the current, the, they are the current person responsible for patch management. If there's a change, you have to ask for the correct detail. You have to make sure that the, the right person has their details in the point of contact and the address if you are in doubt you can always set up a meeting with the system owner who is uh, whoever is going to be the current system owner set up a meeting with them go through the stakeholders they might be able to help you uh, figure out if there is any change in the stakeholders and the point of contact all right so moving down we have what technical point of contact the lead you verify that as well we also have what the information system security officer if you are the information system security officer, you make sure your name is going to be here and your right address is also listed. All right. So moving down, all of this thing, make sure that all the information is correct. So especially we have the system owner, whoever is going to be the system owner, making sure their name is reflected here, point of contact, the address and their phone number and email and everything is up to date. The CISO, likewise, you verify whoever is going to be or whoever is the info, uh, whoever is the authorizing official, the information should be accurate as well. All right. All right. Moving on. We have system architecture diagram. So you have to make sure you have the current 
architecture diagram for your system. If you are in doubt, you can always set up a meeting with the system admins or the network admins or the network lead to make sure the system, uh, the system architecture diagram is reviewed and is right and reflect the current operational status of the system. So we can see from here that we have the system architecture. The following section provides a general description of the architecture of the Dynamo system. So this is what you're going to be reviewing with the system admins and the network admin or the network guys to make sure whatever information is being listed here, the IP addresses, the location and the information flow of the system is still accurate. You know, you review that with them and making sure you have the right information and the right diagram for the system. All right, moving on. Number four, hardware and software inventory. And this is very important because sometimes servers could be decommissioned and new servers will be introduced into the environment. Um, you know, we have switches, routers, firewalls, you know, things like that will be upgraded. Some of them will be de decommissioned, removed from the inventory, uh, and some of them will be added to the inventory. Uh, some software will be discontinued. The use of some software will be discontinued. Some other new software will be introduced into the boundary or into the system. These are all information that you should make sure your system or your SSP captures. And then you reflect and update all the necessary inventory changes within the SSP. For instance, as we can see here in the uh, uh, sample SSP, we have the hardware description. Right. So the principal hardware consists of uh, application servers, web servers and load balancers. Please refer to Appendix G for further details on the Dynamo hardware. So typically some of our, uh, some SSP will not list all the hardwares within the SSP as a Word document or a PDF form, but they will give it as an appendix and then maybe put everything in a spreadsheet whereby, you know, it's going to be located somewhere else. But nonetheless, when, whenever you're doing the review, you have to make sure wherever the hardware inventory is located, you go there, you review the hardware inventory and make sure the hardware inventory reflects the current status of the system. So likewise, when you go down to the software description, the Dynamo, so the Dynamo system environment consists of virtualized application servers and database servers used to host Dynamo web application. The present system is Windows 2012 and database is Microsoft SQL Server 2012, for instance, right? So please refer to Appendix G for further details on the Dynamo software. So likewise, you go to the Appendix G and pretty much going to be like a spreadsheet where all this information is captured. You review it, make sure any software that is not up to date or the versions of the software has been changed due to upgrade and patches. You have to make sure you capture the versions and the uh, uh, the versions of the software when whenever there is an upgrade or a patching requires a new you know level of the software. Pretty much capture the version of the software, and if the software is no longer in use, you have to get the right software and replace it within the inventory. Moving so moving on number five, security control implementation statement accuracies. So here, this is very important. You have to look for the implementation statement, look for tools, software, technology referenced in the technical controls or any other controls for that matter, be it management or operational control, and make sure they have not been changed or replaced with any other solution, right? So whenever you have a, a control implementation statement that is referencing tools that are being used or the version of the tool that are being used, you know, you have to make sure that the version on the and the tools are still accurate. So this is very, very, you know, it's like it's a bit time consuming because you have to really read the implementation statement, identify the ones that are referencing some tools that are being used to satisfy the control, you know, get them ready, have a meeting, you know, schedule a meeting with the technical folks or whoever you think can help you identify if these tools are still within the environment or within the system boundary. And then once they confirm that, yes, we still use this tool, then you know your implementation statements are accurate. Also, in some of uh, uh, the management control and operational controls, look for the account management procedure. Are there, uh, was there any change in the account management procedure? Is the authorization and approval process changed? 
do you have to do some ccb for the change management is there a change in the uh ccb process for any of the changes for any of the changes to be implemented on the system look for these kind of things you know the management because as the year goes by sometimes um the processes uh tweak a little bit so you have to know that the change management the approval processes are still the same account management process you know you know account authorization account request and account approval and the signatures uh, signatories for these uh, authorization and approval processes have not been changed and stuff like that these are some of the things that you have to make sure you capture them accurately on your implementation statement for instance going back to our sample ssp you notice that we have the management control so you have to have a plan as to which class of the control you want to start with if you think you want to start with the management control you can go over all the management control and identify the point of contact who can help you identify any changes or you know kind of verify or you know ascertain the accuracies of some of this implementation statement you know you can go through that so for instance here we have the management control first so you, you read through all this information for instance RA1 risk assessment policy and procedure right what is the implementation status It's in place and it's what inherited right it describes the control and then you go down to the implementation statement so for instance here we have IMO implementation of control how is this control implemented this controls this control was determined to meet the uh, to meet the pro properties of an organizational common control as defined by section blah 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 in the SSP. Risk assessment responsibility policy and procedure are formally documented in this order, right? Managing enterprise risk CIO IT security 0630 revision 2 CIO IT security 0630 is reviewed every two years, right? And disseminated to IMO personnel with security roles and responsibilities so these are some of the things that you have to identify are uh, this order right so you see this IMO order have this been changed have they you know uh the, the revision date have they been changed you know these are some of the things that you have to look into whenever you are reviewing your ssp and the control aspect of things is going to take a longer time for you to complete because you really have to read through these controls and look for any reference to any uh, uh, laws, applicable laws and regulations. What are the versions of the law? Uh, you know, has, has any law been changed or updated? You know, stuff like that. You know, you, you you get a drift, right? So you have to read through the control. So pretty much the control aspect of things will take you longer time to complete, but uh, the stakeholder point of contact, the system descriptions, and all those things, you can knock those out pretty easily. But then again, when you're doing the control, you have to make sure the implementation statement, especially when you are going through a uh, security control assessment, you know, you have to make sure your uh, implementation statement are accurate because the assessors will read this implementation statement and based on that, they're going to request a uh, security control artifact to ascertain that your control is in place and it's working properly. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you find this video useful, do like, share, and subscribe if you have not subscribed already. Please do comment below and let me know your thought on the video, and I will see you in the next video.